Ooh, that was loud. What is bright? Yay! Bro Daddy made it first! I'm coming, boo boo. I'm coming. Hot. You, you're gonna be in my sweet. Daddy boy! Yay! You made it! Okay. Special sauce. I need to. Oh. I need to re net. Re, re relocate to the floor to make the little thing a happy <laughs> sponsor too many Christmas. I am sorry. You're tangled. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Hold on. Athena, you may not eat the cat. Okay, let me just throw you in the chair. How about that? There. Now I can resituate and you can be happy in a chair. You're laughing at her meow, aren't you? Okay, do you want to come back to my lap? Me on. Or lady. <laughs> she stole my blanket. Oh my goodness, so now Athena's happy because I'm no longer on the computer. She's just chilling. She stole my blanket. Look at this. She stole my blanket. <laughs> and she looks pissed off. So, like, I can't take it. I can't move her.
Oh my goodness, we're ready. I'll be right back, y'all. She does not want to play. A special sauce, don't don't play. Special sauce just yells. I know what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a reading day. If I can find my book. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I know. Grumpy lady. I need my blanket back because it's chilly. She's just a grumpy lady. Hi, Thomas. I'm okay. How are you? Get out of his face. I'm sorry. I have to grab the book I'm going to read. You're so bad. You're going to think, like, do you hate me? Really want to go? Oh, Marcus! That cat is fine. I think I know my cat. More of a crest of twilight. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. Go lay down. Oh my goodness. Oakley Doakley. Well, we're on chapter 17. Um, let me pop my music because I have some reason to have it playing. Hey, 
I turned to back to the mirror and found Nagavin's face shrewd, watchful. I had expected her to say something, but she did not. She merely sat and waited for me to commit, commit myself. What would Queen Nagavin's illegitimate want for Princess Meredith other than Seely Court in return for curing her knight? I purposely put both our titles in the same sentence, emphasizing that I knew she was queen and I was not. I was hoping to make up for Frost's outburst. She looked at me for a few heartbeats, then gave a very small nod. What would Princess Meredith of the Ancelic Court offer us? You once, you said once that you would give much for a longer drink of my blood. She looked startled before she schooled her face to courtly blankness. When she could control herself, she said, Blood is blood, Princess. Why should I care for yours? Now I just, she was just being difficult. You said that I tasted of high magic and sex, or have you forgotten me so quickly, Queen of Evans? She made my, I made my face fall, my eyes downcast. Didn't mean so little to you? I shrugged and let my newly shorter length hair fall across my face. I spoke behind a curtain of hair that sparkled like spun rubies. If the blood of the heir to the throne means nothing to you, then I have nothing to offer. I turned my eyes toward her, knew the effect that those tricolored green and gold eyes could have through a frame of blood auburn hair, coupled with the glimpses of skin like polished alabaster. I had grown up among women and men who used their beauty like a weapon. I would never have dreamed of doing it with another she, because they were all more beautiful than I, but with Agavin and her hungry eyes that followed my men, with her, I could use my own otherworldliness as she tried to use hers. Oh my goodness, Danny Boy. She slapped her tiny hand on the arm of her chair hard enough to startle the white mouse. By Flora, you are your aunt's blood. Prince Cell has never mastered his beauty as Andias has, and as you have. I gave a small bow because it's always hard to bow from a sitting position. A pretty compliment from a lovely queen. She preened, smiling, petting the mouse leaning back in her chair so that her sheer dress showed off more of her body. Her body had gone past slender to cavernous, so that it was like looking at a little starved thing. But she thought her body was beautiful. I could show nothing less on my face. Uh-huh, sure, Danny boy. Frost stayed unmoving a little behind me. He'd removed his belt, his shoulder holster, his suit jacket, but nothing else. Even the shoes were still on. He was not going to strip for Gavin. Doyle, on the other hand, had removed his shoulder holster, his belt, his shirt. The silver ring in his left nipple glinted so that Gavin could see it, even in profile. Reese continued to work all that thick black hair as if he were smoothing out the train of a dress. The men moved about me like ladies in waiting, preparing themselves for bed. They made me alone. They left me alone with, to deal with Nagevin, which meant I was doing all right on my own. Good to know. Oh my goodness. You're making me self-conscious, Danny boy. There. 
Now you see nothing. Hi, Primal. Mm. I flashed her a curve of lips as red as the red, red rose. No lipstick needed. I drink of my blood to cure my night. You agree? You give your own life fluids, life's fluid away very freely, princess. She was being cautious. I only give that which I own. The prince thinks he owns all the court. I know that I own only the body I inhabit. Anything else is hubris. laughed. Will you come home so that I may feed? Do you agree that another feeding is worth my night's cure? She nodded. I agree. Then what would a feeding once a week be worth? I felt the men behind me tense. The atmosphere of the room was suddenly thicker. I was careful not to look at them. I was princess. And I didn't need permission of my guards to do anything. I either ruled or did not. Yes, Max, he is a very big dog. The Gavin's eyes narrowed into pale little flames. What's that supposed to mean, a feeding once a week? It means exactly what I said. Why would you offer to make a weekly blood offering to me? For an alliance between us. Hi, Boo Boo. Wait. <laughs> Oh my god, what? What's that? You wanna play? Your butt on that because you're gonna roll on it. Hi, hey, mate. Good evening. Bears and wolves as pets are very interesting. Especially when one won't leave me alone. What am I? I am human. What are you? I'm not comfortable. Wow, Danny boy, you apparently, I don't know when I'm not comfortable. Danny boy is the one that knows. I have to ask him. 
All right. Am I comfortable now? That was an accident, Toothless. I'm sorry you got scared away. Hey, watch your feet. You can't walk on a laptop. Okay, I'm going to take that as uncomfortable. Is it playtime? Comfortable now, Danny boy. Zeus, you can't lay where my chair goes. Oh my goodness. Did you actually finally hit treats? Not a towel. Do you think this looks like a towel? Danny boy. Oh, Dark Knight says no blinky. That's better, Mike. I'm I'm happy to oblige. Binky Blinky. Ooh. Now you gotta let go. Yeah. Who just cuddles with a towel? Like, I'm cold, so I'm gonna grab a towel. No, Denny boy. We use blankets for that shenanigans. Okay, you need to let go. 
what how am I supposed to be warm then? If I take it off, how am I supposed to stay warm? Huh, Danny boy? Give me a solution. I can put on my robe instead. Outside. I mean, that's true. To an extent. Because a towel also is an abrasive. As you rub your body clean, it gets the um, the dead skin cells and stuff off of your skin. So it does get dirty. Even if you clean really well. Alright, come, come hug. Go lay down. Lay down. Outside. Yep, he's gonna be my blanket. So once he gets here, I'll I'll take off my blanket. Hi Goss. Y'all gonna be so excited when the warm weather gets here. <sighs> Especially since I don't have AC. Okay. Frost pushed toward me over the bed. Meredith, no. He was going to say something unfortunate and ruin everything. I had the beginnings of an idea and it was a good one. No, Frost, I said. You do not tell me no. I tell you no. Or yes. Don't forget that. I gave him a look that I hoped he understood, which was shut the fuck up and don't ruin this. You'd have to come so we can find out, Danny. I am reading A Crest of Twilight. Me too, DJ. So that's not why I said y'all are gonna love it when the warm weather comes. Mm. He closed his mouth into a tight, thin line, so obviously unhappy, but he sat there, sulking. At least he was quiet about it. I heard Dale, Doyle taking a breath, and I just looked at him. The look was enough. He gave a small nod of his head, and let Reese began to brush out his long hair. There was a wave to all the blackness because of the braid, I think. I remembered Doyle's hair as straight. I was distracted for a moment, watching Reese kneeling, so pale and perfect, against all that darkness. It was Doyle cle clearing his throat who made me jump and turn back to the mirror. Nagaman laughed, the sound just slightly off-key bells, as if it were something lovely that had been just a bit malformed.
My apologies for my inattention, Queen Hickevin. If I had such a bounty awaiting me, I would make this conversation a short conversation. And what if you had a bounty of my blood awaiting you? What then? Your face sobered. You are persistent. It is most unfaithful. like I am part brownie, and we are more per- a more persistent people than the she. You are part human as well. I smiled. Humans are like the she. Some are more persistent than others. She didn't smile back at me. For another drink of your blood, I will cure your green knight. But that is all. One drink, one cure, and we are done. One drink for of my blood. For one drink of my blood, King Karad of the Goblins became my ally for six months. Her delicate eyebrows raised. That is goblin and she business, and none of ours. We are the demi fay. No one cares. You're, why did you lick me? You never lick me. Why did you lick me? Not once, but twice. Hi, Jimmy. We are the Dimothy. No one cares who we ally ourselves with. We fight no battles. We challenge no duels. We mind our business and everyone else minds theirs. So you refuse an alliance. I think caution, caution is better part of valor here, princess, no matter how tasty you may be. In negotiations, always try to be nice first, but if nice doesn't work, there are other options. Everyone leaves you alone, Queen the Kevin, because they consider you too small to worry about. Prince Sal thought he was big enough to spoil plan- your plans with the Green Knight. Her voice held the first hint of anger. Yes, and what did he offer you for that bit of work? The taste of she flesh, knight's flesh, and blood. We feasted that night, Princess. He paid you in someone else's blood. When his body was full of blood, only one step down from the queen herself. Have you ever tasted the queen? Danny boy! Nigevin looked nervous, almost frightened. The queen shares only with her lovers or her prisoners. How that must irk you to see such a precious gift wasted. Nigevin pouted tiny ghost silver lips. If only she would take some of my people to her bed, but we are too small, I finished for her. Yes, she hissed, yes, always too small. Too small a power for an alliance, too small a power to be used except as her sneak spies. Tiny pale hands balled into fists. The white mouse cowered away from her as if he knew what was coming. Even the trio of ladies behind her throne shuddered as if from the brush of an icy wind. And now you do dirty work for her son, I said. My voice was carefully neutral, almost pleasant. (laughs) Oh my god. At least he sought us to do his work. The anger in that small and delicate figure was frightening. Her rage made her take up more space than mere physically physicality could explain. She was truly regal in her rage. 
I offer you what the queen will not. I offer you what the prince will not. And what is that? The royal blood. Blood of the very throne of the unseelie court. Ally with me, Queen of Heaven, and you will have such blood, not only once, but many times more. Broken heart! Hi! Oh. Have you been? Bro Daddy! I'm not gonna stand in your way. Oh, Daddy, you're so mean. became narrow little slits again, glittering with a co fire colder than the diamonds on her crown. What would either of us gain from such an alliance? You would gain the ear and the aid of my allies. The goblins have little to do with us, and what of the she? What of them? As allied to one of their heirs, you would gain status. They would no longer be able to dismiss you, for fear that you might bear a grudge and whisper it back to me. romantic. She kept those glowing eyes on me, and what would you gain from this alliance? You would spy for me, as well as for the queen, and so you would cease to spy for him. He won't like that. He doesn't have to like it. If you are my ally, then to injure you is to insult me. The queen has decreed that I am under her protection. To harm me now is a death sentence. So he insults me, then you step in. Then what? Threaten to bring your entire court out here to Los Angeles, out here to me. She shivered. I would not wish to take my people out into the city of men. She spoke as if it were only one city of men, the city. Oh, Danny boy. Bro, Daddy, I didn't do nothing to you. Okay, I'm letting you guys know that I'm going to get off early -er tonight. I'm going to get off at 22.30 Eastern time. So, like, in 15 minutes. Just so you guys are aware. Hi, Raul. Oh, Danny boy. Through the screen.
You who live in the botanical gardens, acres of open land, there's room for you here, Nick Evans, I swear it. But I do not want to leave the court. Wherever the demi travel, fairy follows. Both she do not remember that. Kitty's dropped. <laughs> My, my father made sure I knew the history of all the Fae. The Denethae are the most closely allied with the rawness that is fairy, the very stuff that makes us different from the humans. You are not a leprechaun or pixie to hide and die away from fairy. You are a fairy. It is not said that when the last, is it not said that when the last Denethae fades, there will be no more fairy upon the earth? A superstition, she said. Maybe, but if you leave the unseely court and the seely court retains its own demi fay, the unseely will be weakened. Cell may not remember that bit of our lore, but the queen will. If Cell insults you enough for you to pack your belongings, the queen will intercede. She will order us to stay. She cannot order another monarch to do anything. That is our law. Queen Nagevin looked nervous. She feared Andias. Everyone did. I do not wish to anger the queen. Neither do I. Do you really believe that the queen would punish her own son if he drove us away, rather than take out her anger on us? She had crossed her legs again, arms folded over her chest. Forgetting to flirt, forgetting to be regal in her fear. Where is Cell now? I asked. McGevin giggled, a most unpleasant little giggle, being punished for six months. There are bets going around that his sanity will not survive six months of isolation and torment. I shrugged. He should have thought of that before he was such a bad, bad boy. Ooh, a garden would be fantastic. That sounds so pretty. I like that dream. Hi, JD. You're flippin', but if Cell comes out insane, it will be your name that he screams, your face that he wants to smash. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. What? It's a human saying. It means I'll deal with the problem when and if it comes to pass. She seemed to think me thinking very hard, then said, How would you offer this blood to me? I do not think either of us would relish a weekly trip between Fairy and Western Sea. I could put it up on a piece of bread and the essence could be sent to you via magic. She shook her head, ghostly curls bouncing around narrow shoulders. The essence is never the same. What do you suggest? If I send one of my people to you, they could act as my surrogate. I thought about it for a moment, feeling cross stillness, hearing the heavy, almost tearing sound of Reese pulling the brush through Doyle's hair. Agreed. Tell me the cure for my night and send your surrogate. She laughed, off key bells ringing. No, princess, you will gain the cure from the lips of my surrogate. If I give it to you now, before I've been paid, you may think better of it. I have given you my word. I cannot go back upon it now. I have dealt with the great of fairy for too long to believe that everyone keeps their word. Oh my goodness, Pro Daddy, that's funny dream. Hi. Um, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Mm.
It is one of our most stringent laws, I said. To be forsworn is to be outcast. Unless you have friends in very high places who make sure such tales are never spread. What are you saying, Queen of Kevin? I am only... I say only this, that the queen doth love her son much, and has broken more than one taboo to keep him safe. Aww, you missed the good part, Danny boy! We stared at each other, and I knew without asking that Sel had made promises and broken them. That alone should have made him outcast, and certainly denied him the right to any throne. And Dias had always spoiled Sel, but I never realized just how much. When can we expect your surrogate? I asked. She seemed to consider this, reaching an idle hand out toward where the mouse was crouched. It kept close to her, its long whiskers twitching, ears alert as if it still wasn't sure of its welcome. She shrieked it gently. A few days, she said. We were not always at home to welcome visitors. I would be loath to have your envoy receive less than our best hospitality. Leave a pot of flowers by your door, and that will sustain him. Him? I believe a him would please you more, would it not? I gave a small nod, because I wasn't sure I cared. I was sharing blood, not sex. So I didn't have a preference. At least, I didn't think I did. I'm sure the queen is wise in her choosing. Hey, free food! Pretty words, princess. It remains to be seen whether you have pretty actions to back up those words. Her eyes flick back to the men and settle on Doyle and Reese. Pleasant dreams, princess. And to you, Queen McGavin. Something harsh crossed her face, made it look even thinner and sharper, as if her face were a mask. If she reached up and ripped her face off, I was not going to be able to hold my business face in place. But she didn't. She merely spoke in a voice that was like oh, the whisper of scales on stone. My dreams are not your, are my own business, princess, and I will keep them like I, as I like them. I gave her another half bow. I meant no insult. None taken, princess. Merely envy rearing its ugly head. With those words, the mirror went blank and smooth. Oh, Danny boy, you gotta, you gotta not have to have your alarm clock. Gotta get rid of that thing. Oh, broken heart gets the lobster tail that you wanted, DJ. Oh yeah, broken heart. I sat gazing into my own reflection. Movement caught my gaze, and I watched Reese and Doyle still on their knees. Muscles worked in Reese's arms as he brushed Doyle's hair. Frost didn't so much move as just look at me in the mirror, so hard that it turned me to look at him. Frost glared back. The other two seemed unaware of my attention. Nick Evan is gone. You can stop pretending, I said. I haven't finished brushing out all of this hair, Reed said. Why? This is why I stopped growing mine down to my ankles. It's almost impossible to take care of, by, take care of it by yourself. He separated out another section of hair, hefted it into one hand, and began to brush it with the other. Doyle was silent as Reese worked on his hair. 
with the serious face concentration of a child. There was absolutely nothing else childish about him as he knelt nude, surrounded by a sea of black hair and multicolored pillows. His body was, as always, tightly muscled, pale, gleaming. He was lovely to look at, but he wasn't excited. Nude didn't mean sex to the she, not always. Ooh, I need to go to a buffet. I haven't been to one in a while. That sounds delicious. World War Three. Jeez, Danny boy. I my nails. Frost made a small movement that turned me to him. His eyes were the dark gray of the sky just before a storm. He was angry. It showed in every line of his face. The tension in his shoulders, the way he sat, so careful, immobile, the shimmering of his with energy at the same time. I am sorry if I upset you, but I knew what I was doing with Nick Evan. You may you have made it abundantly clear that you rule here and I merely obey. His voice was harsh with anger. I sighed. It was early, but it had been a long day. I was too tired for Frost's hurt feelings, especially since he was in the wrong. Frost, I cannot afford to appear weak to anyone right now. Even Doyle holds his, holds his own opinion in public, no matter how unfavorable it is in private. I have approved of everything you've done today, Doyle said. I am so happy to hear that, I said. He gave me a very level gaze, ruined only a little by the tug of his hair from the brush. It's hard to look menacing when you're being fussed with. He stared at me until most people would have looked away or flinched. I met his gaze with my own empathy, empty one. I was tired of games. Just because I could play them, and play them fairly well, didn't mean I enjoyed them. I've had enough power plays for one day, Doyle. I don't need any more, especially not for my own guards. He blinked those dark, dark eyes at me. Hold off, Reese. Meredith, I need to talk. Reese stopped obediently, sitting back among the pillows, the brush still in his hand. In private, Doyle said. Frost jumped as if he'd been struck. It was his reaction more than Doyle's words that made me suspect we were talking about more than just a few secrets. It is my night with Meredith, Frost said. His anger seemed to have vanished on the wings of possibilities he had foreseen. If it was recess, then he would have to wait his turn again. But I have not had a turn. If it was Reese, you'd have to wait his turn again, but I have not had a turn, so I am one within my rights to ask for this evening. Frost stood, almost doubling in his haste, and the lack of space at the foot of the bed. First, she hold me back from helping her today. Now you take my night in her bed. I would accuse you of jealousy if I did not know you better. Reoccurring dreams, bro, Daddy. I have reoccurring dreams all the time, like all the time, like all my dreams are reoccurring, and that's how I get half of the ideas I write about is because they're from dreams. All right, y'all. I'm gonna get off. I'm going to go take care of my head. I'm going to go sit in a dark room. Good night, everyone. I hope you have a great night. Um, enjoy your dinner, Broken Heart. It sounds delicious. Um, good night, DJ. Have a nice night. Hey, bro, daddy. Sweet dreams. Have, 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 yeah. Have non-food dreams. Um, sweet dreams. Danny boy, maybe you'll get to finish the dream that you had of us.
Good night, Maydale. Sorry you didn't um, get to be here long. Yeah, Danny boy, I, my head's really, really bad. Like, really bad. So, I'm gonna go. Good night.